ladies and gentlemen, I just purchased Johnson & Johnson in Starbucks. I look so forward to breaking this down for you, so let's jump right in. Welcome back, my passive income investors alike. Uh, I didn't have time to make this video at home, and it took me long enough to make this decision as it's been and many of you heard me talk about Johnson & Johnson and Starbucks a lot it's something that I brought up on multiple 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 occasions and I'm gonna break down for you today why I decided to purchase um, a little bit of each they're just starter positions I definitely think I paid fair or overvalue for Starbucks which I will explain and I think I got a discount on Johnson & Johnson so while I have a few minutes here just heading down uh, to do some work in the city, I figured it'd be fun to uh, break these decisions down for you. I don't know what they're currently trading at, and I'll show you some screenshots of my live account, uh, just because by the time I get home, I'm not gonna have time to do anything with it anyways. But um, really quickly, guys, uh, Johnson & Johnson, let's start with that one. Uh, it's a massive pharmaceutical company. As we all know, we're talking about AbbVie and all those companies, pharmaceuticals are just on discounts. When I'm looking at companies to buy, I like, especially when I'm looking for safe companies like Apple or Microsoft, um, when I'm trying to pick the big conglomerate guys, I like picking the ones that sit on the S&P 500 index and preferably the ones that sit in the top 10. Most people don't realize that the top 10 stocks on like any Vanguard index usually makes up about 20% of the overall portfolio. And there's very few companies in that top list uh, that aren't tech related and a lot of them don't pay dividends like Amazon, um, that, I know Amazon sits up there for sure. Uh, there's Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Johnson & Johnson's in the top 10, Google. Um, I'll throw a list up just so you guys can see these. And Johnson & Johnson, let's be real guys, it's just one of those companies you know is almost a generation holder. Um, just steady increase for dividends, their payout ratios are very reasonable, they have a ton of cash on the books. Massive company that just gets what they're doing. Um, a big portion of their sales, the majority of their sales come from pharmaceuticals, but we do, they're more well known for things like Listerine, Tylenol, and like basics, um, just basic over-the-counter products that we use regularly but those products I think don't make up for much more than 12% of the total revenues or something like that like it's a very um, it's a very very small percentage of the uh, the overall company's income they're mainly focused on medical so they do like medical supplies uh, they have a bunch of drugs are actually involved in the same like immune um, drugs that um, that Pfizer's involved in along with uh, AbbVie are also involved there's a lot of money being made in the pharmaceutical industries that have to do um, with immune, um, I, I, I'm not gonna get technical about this, I'm not a doctor, okay? Uh, but the reason I bought Johnson & Johnson was mainly for the fact that I think it's one of the few stocks that's on a discount right now that sits on the top 10 of the S&P 500, and on top of that, it also, um, it's just a dividend stock, and it's a safe one at that, so I feel like I'm adding a tanker to my portfolio to add some stability. I've been so dividend focused lately, I have, not too many tankers as I call them, like safe, reliable, long-term stocks. They don't go up a lot, they don't go down a lot, but they pay a healthy dividend. And like I said, compare Johnson & Johnson to every other stock that sits on that top 10 list, and I think you'll agree that it's one of the very few that seems to be sitting in what I would call discount territory. So I picked some of it up. Not a lot, starter position, only about $2,200 worth, $2,100 worth, give or take, uh, because I do plan on averaging in, and because I'm in Canada when I'm buying US holdings, I like being careful just because the dollar fluctuates so much. So right now the Canadian dollar is at par. It's not down a whole lot, it's not up a whole lot, it's kind of sitting in this midsection, so I figured I'd just buy a little bit in case uh, the dollar continues to drop, or if it goes up, I can still get better buying opportunities. Now, Starbucks, oh my God. Starbucks is almost painful to me, guys. Uh, Starbucks is a company I have been watching for years and years and years, and I just started talking about um, those basic um, uh, coffee stocks. So ever since I sold Constellation Brands because they fired Bruce Linton, um, I didn't, um, and I mitigated out of anything to do with mostly marijuana except for MO and Alter Group that has to do um, with Kronos Group. Uh, so Altria Group, a uh, big tobacco company, they have some exposure to marijuana and it's the only exposure I currently have to marijuana. But I used to own Constellation brands that had major exposure to Canopy, but I didn't agree with their decision so I sold out. And I've been looking for another way into, um, not specifically pharmaceuticals with Johnson & Johnson, but a direct thing that I would consider a drug and addiction. Um, and I don't consider the Listerine and Tylenol and some of the stuff Johnson & Johnson does. Well, I guess they are selling ketamine now. I think Johnson & Johnson got approved for um, ketamine thing you snort to help deal with depression. 
weird days we live in, boys um, and girls. Um, <laughs> be politically correct. But anyways, Starbucks, all right? So Starbucks and coffee to me, because I drink it religiously, I, not Starbucks, mind you, that's expensive. That's like premium brand, but so is Constellation Brands. Constellation Brands is the premium alcohol industry when it comes to beer with um, their Medellas and their Coronas. So I figured that um, if I'm gonna buy coffee, I was looking at the balance sheets, and I figured you're better off just paying the premium, guys. Um, unfortunately, coffee stocks, just they never seem to come on discount. Dunkin' Donuts is the one that I've been looking at a lot, along with McDonald's. Uh, because they're kind of like, I mainly consider them coffee brands because they start with coffee and people go in for coffee, but they buy snacks, foods, whatever else. Um, in my opinion, same thing with Starbucks, right? People go in for the coffee, but they usually buy something else. Now, I've been comparing the balance sheets, guys, and I just, Dunkin' Donuts uh, doesn't have a positive uh, debt to asset ratio, uh, which like I said, guys, it's like the first thing I go to when I look into stocks, whereas Starbucks actually has for, and the growth that Starbucks is, and the kind of growth company that is, it's kind of mind-boggling to me that it's it's managing um, a positive debt-to-asset ratio, and they're very good with their management team. So I figured, you know what, like Warren Buffett says, you're better off um, paying fair value, or what I'm gonna call, I might have overpaid at this price, which is why I only started a very small starter position at, again, around 2,000, 2,100 bucks, just to see what happens, because um, I don't want it to get away from me again, and I'm just kind of tired of watching it go up and up and up and not having any exposure to coffee. So I'm gonna use Starbucks as my mitigator away um, from Constellation Brands, and that's gonna be one of my new drug picks, because coffee is a drug, and I just, every time I go to the mall, the two places that are the most packed, I swear to God, Starbucks, always a lineup at Starbucks, and there's always um, people in Apple, man. Apple, the temple of Apple, unreal. Um, I don't buy Starbucks, I don't drink Starbucks, I drink coffee religiously, but at home I'm a treat frugal minimalist and I don't believe in paying for coffee. Mind you, when I'm out and about once in a while, I'll get some Tim Hortons or something, but Tim Hortons is now owned by Burger King. It's kind of a convoluted stock to own. I just kind of want that straight bread and butter coffee stock. And I think Starbucks is the best for that because uh, that's their main brand, obviously, um, is premium coffee products. Um, again, I don't think in my entire life I've only ever purchased Starbucks once, uh, but I can kind of say the same thing about Modelo's and Corona's. I don't drink... Uh, beer that that often and when I do it's usually just whatever's cheaper available uh, so because I, I just I don't care about drinking that much so it doesn't bother me I, but anyways um, that's why I purchased Starbucks well did I tell you why I really purchased I just purchased it because I just want exposure to coffee guys and uh, there's just nothing cheap on discounts in the coffee sector so I figured you know what I'll take Johnson & Johnson for what I think is the discount and I'll buy fair value for coffee because it seems to be on a run that never quits lately it's kind of like Microsoft it doesn't matter when you seem to buy it, it never wants to go down that much. Um, so those are the conclusions that I came to, which brought my dividends up quite a little bit today. Um, and I still have some a lot of money sitting on the sidelines right now, guys. Uh, I actually have been hiding something from you. Uh, as I told you, I have a new account. Uh, I have a new bank. Um, I have a Royal Bank account and a Canadian uh, Scotia Bank account. And I've been funneling money. I've got about $1,000 now sitting in my Royal Bank account waiting to be um, transition into a stock. I don't know what yet. And I also still have about a thousand laying around in my basic account that I told you guys would be allowed to spend. And I think you guys are geared toward that Abby stock. So I might be adding another pharmaceutical. Uh, I'm going to let it just ride out for another day. And then I'm going to pick the top three and then let you guys vote on, I think it's gonna be Abby, Tesla. And, um, there's a couple other realty stocks that have come up a lot, but like I said, I'm going to list the top three and then you guys are going to actually vote. And I will literally buy whatever stock you vote for, whether it pays a dividend or not. Um, but like I said, there's just so much hype around Abby lately. It's blowing my mind after I heard about that stock, how much it's actually coming up on my YouTube channel and everything else. Uh, but yeah, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think about these purchases. Do you think I overpaid for them? Do you think I underpaid? What do you think about Starbucks? What do you think about uh, Johnson & Johnson? I just look at these two companies. I feel like they're moats. Uh, they don't pay a lot in dividends, but they have great growth in their dividends. Over time, they're very stable companies. They seem very reliable, and I just want to add some of that reliable safetyness uh, to the, the, the net that is my dividend portfolio, because let's be real, I mainly focus on high growth dividend stocks. And now that I'm getting closer to that four, while well, I'm in between the four and $500 range, I really wanna just level it out, make sure that dividend's reliable, and then just add some stability to the overall equity aspect of the portfolio. So there's, because like I said, man, my, vol my portfolio is volatile, guys. I'm sure you've been watching the movements lately, and my account moves five, $10,000. Like it's, like it's nothing, but luckily it's always moving up and reaching new highs and lower lows, which is a good sign to me because it means something must be going on right, and so long as that pattern continues, 
I will just keep doing what we're doing into the future, guys. We keep contributing and keep uh, collecting them dividends and buying more stocks. So I hope you guys enjoyed this quick video today of just me breaking down these two companies. Uh, maybe I'll get some videos today from my other channel. If you guys don't know, I'm a full-time magician as well. And I'm just, uh, I've am just i got an opportunity to go entertain for free at an event that's going to be fairly busy this evening. And it's right where my show is going to be in September. So I don't like saying no to opportunities, even if they are free, because um, this is going to allow me to promote myself and hopefully move some tickets for my show. In fact, I even gave my bank advisor, um, well, he's not really an advisor, but it's just my bank guy. I actually gave him some uh, free tickets to my show just now. So I'm hoping he's going to come up. Anyone that helps you in life, guys, you want to give something back. So I like I like being able to give people uh, free tickets to this really awesome show that I'm putting on. So I'm really looking forward to it. But stay cool, guys. Stay awesome. I look forward to chatting to you real soon. I don't want to talk.